So hi, thanks for coming. I'm Jeff Elsek uh, at Basel Studios. At, as uh, Sylvain said, I'm still not used to saying that. Um, I was 12 years at Valve. Um, if you're not familiar with Valve, it's, uh, they have Steam, the PC gaming platform, as well as a maker of games. At Valve, um, I was co-project lead on the Left 4 Dead series, as well as writer on various other franchises, including Half-Life, Portal, Team Fortress. Um, so I had a lot of fun there. But now I'm a creative director on an unannounced project at BASA. So at Valve, I would always work in ways to get my cats into my slides and have them in my talks. I won't be doing that anymore while I'm at BASA. Um, so there'll be no more pictures of my cats, uh, Boris and Bella. OK, but seriously, why am I talking about AI? Um, I, you guys know more about it than I do, right? But I do know something about trying to tell stories in games and in game development. And not only that is it's one of the things I talk the most to other developers about and try to think about new ways we can do things to try to solve some problems. So one of the reasons I joined Boss was I think they had started talking about AI, and I think we're at this point where we can use AI to not just add to the game, but to fundamentally change the way that we can tell story or narrative in games. So I'm gonna use a bunch of examples in this talk. None of them are from the game, okay? This isn't an announcement of the game. Uh, I'm purposely gonna avoid talking directly about the game here. This is just the concepts as it relates to AI so that we can discuss it. And none of this is a promise for what will be in the game. Right, early in development, we're prototyping. Some of this will get cut, some of this will get changed. Uh, so it's not a promise for that. This is what we're trying to do. We purposely wanted to start early and start talking with you guys because we're open about getting feedback from the community and trying to reach out to people and talk about it. So after the talks, um, if you want to grab me and talk about some of what I talk about, please do. Uh, if not tonight, I'm in uh, London once a month pretty much. Uh, my email address is just chat at Basel Studios. You can shoot me an email, meet up, love to talk about it. Seriously, I've pitched this version of this talk to so many different people to try to get feedback to understand, um, so I'm always happy to get feedback. Um, so, you know, obviously games, or AI has been in games for a long time, right, probably from the beginning. Um, you know, but it's like for a lot of simple things of pathing, to combat AI, to, uh, you know, things like we did in uh, Left 4 Dead, where we actually had the thing called an AI director, which um, helped control the pacing of the game, was done by AI. And now, particularly for smaller teams, you'll see them using it for things like procedural content generation, a way to extend and make bigger games with smaller teams. But so, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is fundamentally changing the experience because we're using AI. So, you know, a way to think about it is, if you're doing procedural map content generation, you're creating more content to play, but you're not actually changing the combat or the encounter system. All of those remain the same. You just have more places those happen at. We're talking about, for storytelling and NPC interaction, fundamentally, fundamentally changing the way you can do those. So one way I've been thinking about this is, much like when physics came on board, and you also had physics in games, you can have emergent gameplay happen because you have those physics systems running. We're thinking of the same thing for AI and allowing for emergent gameplay of storytelling. So this is my talk. Oh, it kind of fits on the slide. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. Just We're going to talk about the goals for the project so that you can understand what we're trying to do, our solutions that we think of so far, and then all the challenges with the solution. And that last one's the bulk of the talk, really. And so first, I want to be clear. Whenever you're kind of talking about what you want to do, it makes it sound like you don't like what's there. Um, I'm not saying anything bad about the current games out there. I play those games, I've worked on some of them. Um, I like story in games now as well. Like I like tightly scripted stuff like Uncharted, I'm playing Wolfenstein. Um, I like games like Gone Home where you discover the story as you go along or multiplayer games like PUBG um, where you, there's that kind of emergent storytelling uh, as you're playing. And in fact, that last one's the one that started to get me interested. Because games like PUBG, DayZ, H1N1, Rust, they're interesting because those games achieve emergent storytelling, but they do that in a multiplayer setting with other players. So what about doing that with NPCs? What about doing that with more verbs in the game? I want to be clear, uh, we're not making PUBG with the NPCs. Uh, it's a good idea. If someone wants to go do it, go do it. But um, I think there's such a frenzy around that game right now. I just want to make sure we're not making PUBG. 
And, but you know, the interesting thing there is, the best, and why these kind of stories are interesting is because the best stories are the ones that players can tell about themselves. Right, so um, I can tell you a story about playing um, uh, PUBG with Emery. So it was Emery's first time playing, and he excitedly found a car and raced it over to show it to me, running me over, because uh, he didn't realize that he could hurt me. Um, like, those are, those are good stories. If I'm up here telling you about the time I was Commander Bruce saving the Ethereum princess, that's not as interesting, right? And so we want to be able to tell those kinds of stories. Um, but those stories are tough. So if you think about what a story is, for the most part, it's you try to get something, you don't get it. You try to get something, you don't get it. You try to get something, and if you get it, it's a comedy. If you don't get it, it's a tragedy. Um, and there's this book called Save the Cat. Um, and for films, it breaks down how films do this. So films can be radically different, but at the end of the day, their underlying structure are almost all the same. And there's a reason for that, though. It's just not movies now. It's been around since Aristotle who said, for a tragedy, you need to have a beginning, middle, and end, right? So there's a formula to how we as humans in the West in particular process story. But in real life, you know, a story unfolds in front of you, and it doesn't have that planned structure, right? You didn't wake up today going, I'm going to have a revenge story, or I'm going to have a love story. And so for the sake of this conversation, one of the reasons why that happens is because you have agency in your life, and it's not predetermined. Um, there's other reasons, but for, like I said, for our discussion, kind of stick with agency. So, you know, we're in movies, and predominantly most games, the story is preloaded, right? There's a structure to it as you start the game. And so that limits the amount of agency you have in the game. And you experience it instead of creating it. Um, and now you can have branches, but branches aren't agency. Branches are just options, right? And there's a difference between options and agency. So the number one pillar for our game, the number one goal that we think a lot will allow for emergent storytelling and a new kind of narrative is having complete player agency. Since I keep saying it so much, I'll just define it for everybody in the room, see, make sure we're on the same page. We see agency as um, the player has control over their own character's decisions and actions. Those decisions and actions have consequences within the game world, which may include loss or delayed consequences. And to have real agency, the player has to have enough information to anticipate the consequence before making the action, or at least know they could have gotten that information, but acting brashly and moving without getting that information is in, is in itself agency. Um, the other word I'll use a lot is NPC, in case you don't know, right? NPC is non-player character, it's the characters in the game. And then lastly, the word I use a lot is verb, meaning the actions you can have in the game, think kill, cheat, steal, love. So how much agency are we talking about? that you might get a different branch, that you might get a different ending. Um, we want to go deeper than that. So I'm going to use NPCs as examples a lot in, the, in this talk. Um, so I want to have it to be deep enough that if you and your friend both meet um, an NPC, you may hate them and they may love them. Um, and you know, right now, games try to kind of artificially create the sense of agency by having you like a broad depth of content, right? So you'll meet a lot of different NPCs and you'll have a lot of different experiences based on that, but traditionally, you'll always find that one guy who's gonna unlock the assassin's quest for you, right? And then you meet him, and then all of a sudden, there's this new story of doing those quests. Those are, again, those are cool. Play those games, love them, but what if there was no storyline, right? And you both meet them, and so you meet an NPC, and you throw rocks at that NPC and, and chase him away. Your friend helps that NPC get his car out of the mud. So your friend gets a treat, kind of remembers the guy and moves on. You, you've started a conflict that will now dominate your play sessions for the next couple of months, right? So you have a very different relationship because of what you did. So now, normally, we don't have this happen now in games because if you build content, you want players to play it. It's expensive to build content. But if you're not hand-authoring that content, what if you're using AI, and then you can open up the more possibilities in this branching? And so that's our overall goal of what we want and try to do. So now I'll talk to some of the solutions to that. And these are just some of the solutions. These are kind of the, probably the highest level ones. So we're going to start with no pre-built story for the player. Um, you know, the player is the player. They get to decide who they are in the world and their story. Now that isn't to say that there isn't a world story and, you know, a background for all of this. You know, you need to have that. But that's... That's just kind of place setting for the player's story. 
And then, you know, a problem with stories now is, for me um, especially, is, you know, they're preloaded into the game. So you're really playing the game to learn that character's story, not experience or create that player's story. And uh, sorry for anyone working on games that create cutscenes, but I pretty much click through every single cutscene in every game. So I end up at the end of the game shooting dudes in the head happily, but not knowing why. Um, it probably doesn't say much for me, but that's how I play games. So you know, we want to remove this. We want you to know the story because you actually created the story. Um, it's a story about you. And we think, oops, for agency to work, the world has to be alive so that the player can see both the problems and the solutions. That way you can strategize in how you're going to approach it and not just react. And players um, interactions define their engagement with other characters. Um, you know, one player can have an NPC to be their friend, another an enemy, and over the course of playing, those will either become long-term problems or benefits. And again, not branching, but real relationships. And then they build by both direct and indirect action. So you might have met that NPC because you were watering your crops and you made the ground muddy, and that's why when he drove his car over, his car got stuck, and then you chased him away. It's all connected. And given a problem, Whatever the problem is, the best stories have multiple ways for that story to play out. And also one that doesn't happen often in games means for it to not play out, right? That you just choose to walk away and not engage in that and not go down that story path. We do that all the time in life. But in games, if we're building that content, we want you to go down it. So we want it in the world where there's, in, there, there's no world set of NPCs or NPC systems that'll be exact same for each player. Because it'll be your actions and interactions defining who those, player, who those NPCs are. So to have deep NPC, you need to have char good character AI that, you know, can you butter up a NPC? Can you change their disposition over time? If you anger them early, can you bring them back? And that means, you know, over a course of a session, your relationship with the NPC changes. And it also means that you can get somebody angry that you've never met. Think um, now you might have that neighbor that you've never met, but you've heard their stereo blaring, you know, and you curse at them in the morning. Um, their actions have had impact on you and that you're going to react differently to them. Now, they may be able to repair that relationship over time by you know, bringing you gifts or whatever, but those all work together. Because you want to make sure that not all actions have an instant reaction, um, because you want to be able to set things in the, into action that have consequences that you can look back on and then later understand. And then we also want to have a larger set of verbs, um, and that needs to be more than just kill. So one of the things, one of the limitations right now with emergent storytelling in uh, the multiplayer games is you have a really limited set of verbs, right? And again, that's fine for those games because that's not what they're trying to do. They're not trying to do the storytelling there, but we are. So we need to have a larger set of verbs. And the world itself needs to have deep AI so you can see these interactions and connections. Uh, the complexity needs to be messaged to the player so they can respond and understand. So those are the goals. Um, and now you're probably already thinking a bunch of problems or the pain that will come with trying to get to those goals or those solutions. So now we're going to kind of go over the, the challenges with those solutions. Um, and again, if you have any thoughts of if we pick the wrong goals, because that could be true, or we pick the wrong solutions or whatever, I'm happy to discuss. So the biggest thing for all of this is we need to be able to understand the player. Right? And we need to be able to understand what the player thinks is happening to the player. So if we think the player is in the revenge kill mode, but they actually think they're in a love story, we have a problem. And so understanding what's happening to the player and what the player presumes is happening is really hard. I mean, in Left 4 Dead, we struggled with this if you thought you were in combat or not. Because we could look at the numbers. Were you shooting your gun and killing a zombie? OK, let's extend that time. OK, well, no, because this player still thinks they're in combat because they see the enemy over there. They feel threatened. They're behaving in a way that they think they're in combat, right? And so trying to understand what's happening to the player and they think it's happening is, is a very, very uh, big challenge for us. Another challenge is um, with all this AI kind of bumping up to each other is we want to make sure we don't flatten the experience, right? Players should be able to have big highs and lows. Way to think about this is early racing games, they don't want to simulate the whole race. So they simulated a bubble around you and that was the rubber band effect, right? You can never be too far behind your enemies, or your, not enemies, I guess fellow racers are enemies. Um, and it ended up to flattening the experience. I mean, I think the idea was that you'll feel like exciting that, oh my God, you could always come back, but it ends up flattening it. If you do really poorly, 
you should have to dig yourself out of a hole. If you're doing really great, you should be able to feel that, right? Those are emotions, emotional states you want to be able to have the player feel. And then another kind of big overall challenge is anytime you have any game system that the players interact with over time, they will figure out how to min-max that system to their own negative, right? So they can, if they can get 2x what they want over here, and it's totally unfun and grindy and boring, they will do it over the super fun thing where they just get regular whatever out of it. And so you need to make sure that the fun way to play it is the best way for them to be able to do it. And that's not just the designing of the system, but we need to be able to monitor, monitor players over time in this because that'll change. Um, so the AI, uh, the world itself needs to have deep AI, so the interactions, connections can be alive, and the players can see them and act on them. Um, so when we say that, what that really means then is information is a resource. And so how the player interacts with that information needs to be a little bit different. It needs to be granular, and it needs to be able to be partial. So if you think about it in your life, every day you have, you're operating under a fog of war, right? You don't, need, you don't know all the information but yet you can still be able to make pretty decent choices of what you're doing. But often in games, you know, you'll meet, you meet a henchman and all of a sudden you know every strength or weakness on his boss. Now that's great for the games that do that for what they're trying to solve, but for us, for storytelling, we think that omniscient NPCs break your agency. And so, you know, that said, with all this complexity in the world, the other problem then is you can't make that opaque. Right? If the player doesn't understand that complexity or doesn't have an insight into that, then that's worse than having a simple world. So we need to be able to express that complexity in understandable ways. So one of the big challenges is how can you have story happen to a player not because the game dictated it, but because the player has enough agency in the world to create it. So this means there's going to be story that we are not going to be able to prepare story for. Right? We need to know that, that's, that there'll be a story that happens in this world that we haven't cre necessarily created, hand-created content for. And so a worry I have with that is then if we don't have traditional structure to it and kind of the way we think of narrative, will that feel flat or just not have pacing to the story? And then the goal of the, our attempt at this challenge now, and this is what we're actually um, working on and, and prototyping now is or can we, right? If we think of story not at the end, but at the beginning, and we look for these story opportunities, and we think, okay, we're gonna plant this little seed of a story here, and when the player grabs onto it and starts doing that, well then let's nurture that. Let's take a look at that then, and try to tease that apart and tell a traditional story with what they're doing at that time. So we don't impose story. We give it places to flourish and then recognize those and help them grow. Um, and then with all of this, there also has to be a varying degree of what those stories are. If every story is save the world, it gets boring. It flattens, right? So you have to, have, you have to never have boring or bad, but you have to have a bed of level that you'll go down to and then heighten from there. And so then with all of this, that means then that NPCs need to be able to understand and use themselves that large set of verbs because that lets you then interact with them in a way that you expect. And with all this, then we can't break how a lot, of, we can't break the rules of the world in the way that a lot of games do. If we can't have this scripted event where this AI guy comes to you and goes, oh, you, this is gonna like, right? We have to figure out how to tell this story without breaking those rules. And then for the, all of the NPCs, obviously then, if we're not pre-writing all this story, how are we doing all the dialogue? How are we delivering this information? I mean, this is one place that AI has gotten pretty good at and pretty interesting. I'm not the person who's gonna tell you that they can write Emily Dickinson. I think we probably all know in this room that's not true. Uh, they can ape Emily Dickinson, yes, but if Emily Dickinson didn't write Emily Dickinson, you wouldn't be going to some AI going, oh, that's awesome poems you write. They really get to the heart of being a lonely woman. Um, so, you know, we need to figure out how to express all of those stories from there and then the other kind of scary challenge is, um, so as a game writer, I'll tell you, uh, actors make all my work better. Um, they're able to add nuance and characterization and performance. Right now, a lot of text-to-speech is great if you just want some information delivered to you. It does it in a very believable, human-like way, but it doesn't perform. It doesn't perform the, way, the same way that an actor does. 
And so we need to be able to do that. We need to do that with a whole host of MPCs, not just one. Um, and you know, that's, that's a really big challenge because, uh, so we're working on Left 4 Dead, and the first time we dumped all the audio in, one of the engineers came over to me and he's like, hey, we gotta, this is a problem. This is way too much audio. Um, we gotta figure, it's gonna be a memory issue. We gotta figure some other way to do this. And I didn't have the heart to tell him that this is the first of like five dumps. We're getting so much more audio. And instead he narrowed in and he's like, well, look at this. I think it was Zoe. He had 17 different ways she says thank you. He's like, clearly you don't need that. Right, that's just overkill. So Love for Dead's a zombie apocalypse game. You're being attacked by zombies. There's 17 different ways you say thank you. You say thank you when no zombies are around and somebody gives you um, some pills which are temporary health. You say thank you when somebody helps you up during the, zombie, during the zombie attack. You say it differently when somebody's the only other survivor alive and they help you up, right? There's a, there's a lot of nuance and the cool thing with actors is you can just write thank you 17 times and then go, hey, say it this way. And they do. So how are we gonna do that with AI? So that's a challenge. And so for all of this, um, we need to have the player solving big problems that they need to solve over multiple sessions. Because then that'll add to that, their understanding of those problems and mastery. Right? It needs to be longer than how long does it shoot, ah, excuse me, it needs to be longer than how long does it take me to shoot everybody in this room. Right, because that's reaction and skill based. But if you want to have them solve problems, they need to be longer and take longer to solve. And so we need to do all of this with just not having just the same feeling of the stories, but the activities or the verbs that you use in those stories as well. So this again goes back to not flattening the experience. And some of that it's also just understanding that players play games in different ways, in different types of play, right? So a game's more than just challenge or difficulty. And it's even more than just experience, right? There's more aspects of play we can incorporate, but we can only do that if we understand what the player's doing, what the player thinks they're doing. You know, and that also speaks then to challenge of frustration. If a player gets frustrated and wants to reload a save game, we failed. What we want a player to do is want to go back and try again. That's success in this world. Because, you know, the player needs to be made comfortable with losing and trying again, because one of the definitions of agency is loss. And that's how we can introduce it. And that's also why we want the problems to be big. Because one of the ways we define story is you try something, you don't get it, you try something, you don't get it, you try something, you get it. So the way we can have those kind of stories is by having big problems that take multiple sessions. And then so for, for all of this, different than traditional games is we're building a lot of systems more than content, right? And then we need to tease apart those systems. We need to recombine them. We need to be able to make sure there's enough broad rules and noise into those systems so that the unexpected can happen. And lastly, with all of this, it's to resolve the dissonance that happens where who you are as the player to who the, the game world thinks you are, right? We want that to be, go hand in hand and be the same. So that's if you're playing it, you've been playing for two years, and you started off as a jerk, but now you're a nice guy, and you run into that NPC whose car you chased off. Well, he then had to go get, re, he had to go get a new car. And to get his new car, he had to get resources. And to get those resources, your neighbor had them. Well, that was a neighbor who was actually giving you crops and trying to help you grow yours. Well, those two get in a fight, and the original NPC wipes that guy out. So no longer do you have crops. This guy now has his car. And now, all of a sudden, two years later, you're staring down a giant faction that this guy has formed behind him. You're hungry, and you're about to go to war, and you're like, how did I get here? And then you look back and you go, oh, yeah, I was a jerk. Right, so that's what we're trying to do. And that's it. Any questions? <laughs> yes? I'm, I'm thinking about what you uh, informed by the AI for giving you this story. Um, um, you still need to have some kind of kind of I think that's one of the things we want to explore because some of that is, um, you know, as, especially as a writer coming at this, A, I kind of want to replace myself in a little bit, in a way, but equally, I've made my living not being replaceable. So I hope. God, don't fire me, Emery. Uh, no, uh, 
So I, th I wonder if we need to be able to create a, the, the personalities a little bit. But we, I don't think you can create, like, this guy's going to get in revenge stories, because then that caps what the interactions can be. So we need to figure out a way to bring that out. And there's some AI we've been playing with to try to do this to some success. But the idea of, like, that you're giving them some broad set of data that they can react off of that defines who they are. And then with that, you know, um, I think there's things of, you know, if you go steal something from that guy, then he's gonna be angry at you and that'll bring some of that personality over. But one of the, th it's, it's gonna be hard though, because what, seriously, the performance is a big challenge. One of the things, um, as a game writer, it drives me crazy if there's the people who will write characters where they think that character needs to tell you who they are all the time. But, right, like I remember getting feedback on Francis the biker in Love for Dead, he's like, well, he doesn't ever say he's a biker. Yeah, because he's dressed like a biker, looks like a biker, and talks like a biker. He doesn't, like, you don't go around and go, or I just did today, but you don't normally go around, hey, I'm Chet Felsic, like I'm a game writer. Like, right? And so how do, you, how do you do those things and bring those out? And I think that's gonna be the real challenge. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, as you were talking, it, I couldn't help but kind of feel whether some of the, some of the inspiration is coming from the Fable and those series of games <laughs> which try to do this. They try to create a world where you can create, you know, where you have agency, where you're, the way that you act has a lasting impact on, on its inhabitants. I wondered if you've looked at Fable or how you think this would... Uh, um, well, Fable wouldn't be one of the ones, but it, those kind of games, yeah. I mean, that was originally, I, this has been years ago, looking and going, that still gets to the branching problem, right? Where you still have this small palette of things you can end up doing because at the end of the day, this is gonna be the game. I mean, there's, there's other people who have kind of done similar games like that where you have this broad set of things you can do for this moment, but then it comes down to some gate at some point where the story has to go this way because this is the story we're telling. And so I kept thinking about wanting to try doing something different. And at the time, I wasn't that aware of AI stuff to do. And didn't, I mean, I knew that was that kind of the solution, but I hadn't seen anything that made me think we can go down that way. Because I was always thinking, in, in, for me, I think of the NPCs, I think of characters and the relationship of that. And I didn't think the tools were there yet. And so it's taking some of those, definitely some of those early branching games and thinking, okay, you want to do that, but really be surprised, right? And so then we get here. Uh, yeah, thanks, great talk. Um, so in more traditional storytelling forms like, like novels or films where you're completely like through by the author, um, I'd say the value of that is that the author has something that they want to say, and the knowledge team, right? And you feel like you've learned something at the end of that. Um, do you still want to say something as the writer here? And, and, if, and if so, how do you do that? Or, or do you think storytelling this way abandons that? Or I remember playing the fourth one half life, and I always felt like I, I got something just by being in the environment. Um, would it be like that? Um, there, uh, we're not going into the details of the game, but think of that when we finally do announce of some of it is that, and I'm trying to talk about something is the whole of the game of the whole, not necessarily what individual characters is going to impart this, this story to you, but what we're talking about is the game of a whole is talking about itself and talking about everything there. And so there's a little bit of that. So yeah, it's, it's hard to have an uh, authorial uh, intent when you're essentially giving up right. authorial control, which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, some of this is we're going to try, right? We don't know. Um, that's every project done, we've kind of tried to push narrative in a different way or use different tools or like, um, you know, I think uh, Left 4 Dead tried to say, hey, you're going to play this game a bunch, a bunch of times because it's are short levels you play and you play the same levels again and again. But the story, the, what the characters say is different all the time and there's a bunch of randomness in that. That, that used random as our AI a lot. Um, and like that, that had also we wrote instead of, I think for Half-Life Episode 2, there's a thousand lines in Left 4 Dead, there's 30,000 because we wanted to have that. And so it was trying to attack 
essentially what I realized later was this problem. But yeah, every, everything we've approached has been different. Like TF2, adding in a multiplayer game, characterization, and finding out like animators bring a lot to that game, right? That game's a lot about the animation, the characters, and seeing them in their gear and everything. So how do you do that here? Yeah, no, I, I, that's as, as we're going through some of this, that's definitely going to be the, the challenge and interesting part, right? Um, because, I mean, especially for like some, some of the, what the, the kind of stories we're telling is it's not somebody giving a soliloquy in depth, it's that interaction with you. So you can actually use some pretty common language and that works, but then you need something more than that to imprint your feelings on that character. And so that's then, am I making little nuggets for each character we put in the game? Or is it a bit broader than that? That's kind of, we're going to see. OK. A lot of AI is judged on the oral results. Uh, the character says something. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, that's definitely the, you don't know what's bubbling up underneath in that machine. The only thing you're seeing is your interaction with it. Um, that we can have some physicality of those interactions. Like, you know that guy is mad at you if he's coming over and stealing your stuff, right? So that's the way he can communicate to you without being verbal. Um, but yeah, a lot of that, again, will just be experimentation and, and prototyping and seeing what's, what if, we well, need to make sure that people can understand what's going on in that, in the head, right? Uh, when you're talking earlier, you, you started off quite early on talking about how some films have these common structures. And you went, when you're talking about how you want to make these missions where they kind of suggest something, like playing the player will enter and maybe one with it, maybe they'll ignore it. That is very much sort of similar to what you have to say in terms of jazz music or to improvise comedy theatre. Sure, sure. This whole structure of give something to the other actor, which is interesting in itself, and the is the actor, not the audience. But I was just sort of wondering along those lines, especially with you being a writer. Well, I said, I mean, I think, I think anybody who makes anything takes in everything around them. Um, that the example you just used is also an awesome example, right? So then we should we should have had that one. That's good. Uh, so no, that, 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 is a good, that is a good way of doing it. And that's actually one of the reasons why I like to um, give talks and essentially do these pitches to other people because often it helps me get the language to talk about the thing we're trying to do. And that's, that's a good example. Um, so I don't know if there's anything in particular that we had done on purpose that way, but that's definitely the end result of kind of a way to think about it. So nicely done. It's all been worth it. Oh, what? Oh. Yeah, I was just curious. Uh, during the testing phase that you're talking about, do you ever go and apply the AI to the protagonist to give it completely a hands-off simulation and see what, what happens? Not yet. Still very hard. I would watch that. That's the common approach of the AI that can run. Yeah. 
and then you can have like overarching structures that, you know, and even kind of like thinking about how TV shows are structured, and you've got like things that are solid, sort of Rick and Morty, and you've got things connecting back, back, previous. So yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, no, so, so exactly, that's the way we've been talking about it is there's, there's a, some episodes that are just self-contained, there's some episodes that span, there's a season arc, there is a show arc, and having the player be able to start their session and go, hey, I wanna, yeah, just jump in for a few minutes and not have to deal with that other thing, right? But also space based on their play style. Yes. yes, yeah, so on top of all of this we didn't really talk about, there's a meta, meta, meta AI that is trying to understand some of those because it's a co-op game, so while you'll mostly play it with your friends, if we want to match you with somebody, and it, we say we match with somebody who wants to play like you, but sometimes that isn't what you want to do. You want to match them with somebody else. But we'll keep playing with it, like a lot of those kind of things to see. Yeah, the other thing I noticed that would be quite cool is that there's, there's maybe some interesting possibilities for time travel games, like, like storylines and kind of like project forward, project back, with space wanting to change that they made. God. All right. All right, that's getting complicated. <laughs> uh, we, we, we're, we're not there on that, um, but yeah. <laughs> Last, last question. Uh, so, how would you compare when you're working on with something like Windward, right? Where, where it has, it has yeah. some parts of it. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it, that definitely does. Um, and again, I, I like that game, so I, I, I don't mean to say negative things about it, but just I think you end up being more reactive in that game than proactive. Well, and, and you're not a fact that you're Yeah. And so we wanted to exactly put you in the shoes and then have it be where you could. Essentially, if you're going out and causing the conflict versus the conflict kind of coming to you more and seeing what that looks like. I mean, my, my head is in like those kind of games. Like that's what I play. And I also play RimWorld and stuff, but like tonight I'll go home and play, if I was at home, I'd play PUBG or Battlefield 1 or um, actually I'd probably finish, try to finish Wolfenstein. But like, so it's those kind of games where it's first person and you're, you're, you're having that kind of experience. And so then how do you do that? Because yeah, they do a bunch of interesting things and a lot of those games are like a door fortress or something can do those things because they don't have all the other um, stuff they have to worry about. Like it simplifies a bunch of UI and interface. I mean, think about having 50 verbs, how, what's a drop down list? That's a, that's a horrible idea, right? Like, so how do we do that? How can the player do those things? And yeah, those are, there's a whole, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of great games like that that I love to play. Okay, so chat will be in the other room over there. And also, yeah, but seriously, don't don't hesitate to mail me. It doesn't like I answer emails. Um, love to have more discussions and keep talking about it. Right. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>